In today's video, we're going to be talking about the four options Greeks that are super important. They are delta, gamma, theta, and vega. So if you're an options trader or you want to be an options trader or you're learning about trading options, these are really, really important and they will help you become more profitable in the options market. So if you don't yet know what these are, or maybe you're a little bit fuzzy on them, stay tuned. I'll explain these in depth and how they will affect the price of your contract that you're playing. Before we get started, if you don't know anything about options contracts so far, I do have an options 101 playlist. I would recommend you check out some of the videos over there before watching this one or afterwards if you want to learn about the Greeks first. Also, if you want to chat with me and many other people who are trading options, crypto, stocks, forex, and futures every single day, I have a link to my free Discord in the description below. It's completely free for all features and it will be free forever, so feel free to join and come hang out with us and chat with us. But now let's go ahead and dive in. For this example, I'm going to be using a SPY 440 call contract that expires on 730. Now these numbers are made up, so it's not really too important which contract this is. I made it up so the math is a little bit easier to see and understand here. Let's look at the details of this call contract. The contract cost is 1.0. In other words, as we know, this will cost $100 to open this call contract on SPY. And that's because of the options contract multiplier of 100. So each contract gives you the right to buy or sell 100 shares of the underlying, in this case SPY. So we need to multiply this value by 100 to get the actual cost you'll pay. So to open this contract, it costs $100. The delta here is 0 0.5. The gamma is 0.1, the theta is negative 0.25, the vega is 0.1, and the implied volatility is 50%. So let's dive into all of these numbers and the options Greeks. The first one and the easiest one to understand is definitely delta. Now for call contracts, delta is a value between 0 and 1, and for put contracts, it's the opposite. It's between 0 and negative 1. Let's take a look at how it actually affects your contract. For this example, let's assume that SPY right now is $435. So to buy the 440 call contract, it costs $100. Now let's say SPY goes up by $1. It goes to $436. The delta helps us understand how much the contract will go up when a $1 move in the underlying stock, such as SPY, actually happens. So when SPY increases by $1 here, it means that 0 0.5, our delta, gets added to our contract price. So we bought this buy call contract at 435, SPY went to 436, now the contract is worth 1.5, or $150. Now on the other hand, if SPY went down here from $435 to $434 instead, that would mean that we have to decrease the delta from our original contract price. So instead of our contracts being worth 1.0, now they're worth 0.5. To explain gamma, I'm gonna move it back to the example where we're moving up $1. When SPY increases by $1, the gamma gets added on top of the delta. So as the underlying price of SPY increases, our delta slowly and slowly increases towards 1.0 as well. So when this $1 move from 435 to 436 happens, it changes our delta from the original 0.5 to now a value of 0.6. So from here, if we were to get another $1 move in SPY, we would actually add 0.6 to our contract instead of the original 0.5. So this move from 436 to 437 would now put our contracts worth 2.1 because we're using this new delta of 0.6, which comes from the delta of 0.5 added to the gamma of 0.1. So just to summarize those first two Greeks, the delta shows us how much the contract will increase or decrease with a $1 price movement. The gamma tells us how much delta will increase or decrease with a $1 movement. So next up is the third Greek, and it's called theta. Now theta has nothing to do with the price movement of SPY. So SPY moving from 435 to 436 doesn't affect our theta or our call contract at all because of theta. What theta means is how much that price is going to decrease day over day. So from 9 a.m. on Monday to 9 a.m. on Tuesday, 
theta will get added to the cost of our contract. And since it's a negative value, we'll actually lose value due to this time decay. To summarize, theta is a time decay that makes us lose value if we're buying options. So let's factor in theta into our original calculation here. Let's say when we bought this contract, it was 9 a.m. on Monday, and SPY was $435, and then the next day, SPY was $436, and it's 9 a.m. on Tuesday now. So from our delta from before, our contract moved from 1 to 1.5, and now our delta itself is 0.6. However, theta is going to take into effect as well. Instead of our contract being worth 1.5, it's going to be this 1.5 minus the theta, which is 0.25. In other words, our contract is now worth 1.25. The fourth and final Greek that you need to understand is called vega. Vega is a measure of implied volatility, which is just what you see under Vega listed here. Every stock has its own implied volatility. Now, implied volatility is pretty hard to calculate yourself. There's a whole formula behind calculating it, but you can basically have the idea of if people think the stock is going to move a lot, the implied volatility is going to be high. And similarly, if a stock does move a lot from news or anything similar, that'll also have high volatility. One of the things that drives implied volatility really, really high is when a company is about to have earnings. So the day before or the morning before they release their earnings report, implied volatility is typically very high. And that can lead to something called IV crush, which I'll get into in just a second once you understand what Vega actually means in terms of this implied volatility. So Vega is another calculation similar to Delta, but it's calculating based on the increase or decrease of implied volatility. So as we see, when we open the call contract here, our implied volatility was 50%. Let's say that when this 9 a.m. on Tuesday comes around, implied volatility is now 51%. What that means is we moved up 1% in implied volatility and we'll add one of this vega to our cost. So now instead of the contract being worth 1.25, we actually gain another 0.1 on top of it and make the contract worth 1.35 or $135. Similarly, if implied volatility were to drop, we would lose on Vega. Now, Vega and implied volatility are super important, especially, as I was saying, when playing these around earnings. Because implied volatility can be extremely high before earnings, and then it drops the next day after the earnings, you're going to typically lose a lot of value on your contracts due to Vega. So if implied volatility were to lose 10% here, we would have to decrease 1.0 from our contracts just due to Vega. So instead of adding that 0.1 right here, our contracts would have went from 1.25 down to just 0.25 if implied volatility dropped by 10%. So if you open up a contract on an earnings play, you can basically expect implied volatility to decrease significantly the next day by 10 or 20%, resulting in a significant decrease in Vega. So the main way to win on these earnings plays is that you need the price to move a significant amount in your favor so that the gain that you get from Delta here overrides the loss that you get from both Vega and Theta into here. In other words, if we lose 10% to implied volatility and lose 1.0 from Vega, but SPY itself moves up $10, then we would gain 5.0 from Delta. So we would still be at a net positive. But if earnings are released and implied volatility drops by 20% and the price only goes up $1, we're going to lose 2.0 to Vega, we're only going to gain 0.5 to Delta, and even though the stock will be green the next day and in the correct direction on your contract, you're going to get crushed by Vega. And this exact term is what's known as an IV crush. So I hope this video helps you understand those four options Greeks and allows you to use them in your everyday trading of options or preparing to trade options. It's really important to understand these because blindly buying these calls or puts or selling them, whatever you're doing, can have a lot of negative effect if you don't understand how the Greeks are going to affect those contracts. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. You probably like this content and wanna see similar content. If that's true, do me a favor and do yourself a favor and click that like and subscribe buttons below. 
This will help YouTube understand what type of content you like. It'll help you see my videos for the future. And it also helps support me a ton, which I really, really appreciate. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. And as always, good luck trading.